Joining us from Beijing is uh, Bill Russo, president of auto consultancy Synergistics. And uh, Bill was also Chrysler's vice president for Northeast Asia. A good Monday to you, Bill. Let's talk about this deal. $1.8 billion is the price tag. We talked to someone earlier who said that sounds pretty much around where it should be. What do you think? Uh, was this a good deal for both sides? Well, I think this is on paper again. M&A deals are uh, always look look very promising. I think uh, this, in fact, uh, does have some very sound industrial logic. Uh, Ford gets to sharpen its focus on its core mass market brands. Uh, Geely uh, gets to uh, focus on improving its uh, image globally, as well as improving its technology and product portfolio. And uh, Volvo gets a parent now in Geely that obviously puts a very high price and high value on expanding Volvo's operations globally. Mm. Now, Bill, it's interesting. You said that uh, getting a deal done during a crisis, during a financial crisis, is probably easier than during better times. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you have motivation on the part of uh, all parties. I think uh, Ford uh, needed uh, to sharpen its focus and uh, place its emphasis on its mass market brands. I think Volvo recognizes that uh, as a standalone company uh, operating in a global auto industry, it doesn't have what I would call long-term viability. Uh, access to a market like China, both in terms of its ability to help Volvo compete by lowering its cost structure as well as its expanding the pie, uh, accessing a very a large growth opportunity in China is, is, a, is obviously a motivation for a company that has, uh, I think, global prospects that are pretty limited. Mm. And Bill, let me ask you about the global prospects because, you know, Volvo is a brand that a lot of uh, people in the market say is synonymous with safety. And now Volvo being manufactured by a Chinese car company, do you think it still owns that same reputation? Well, I think that's, that's going to be the challenge of this uh, integration activity is, is maintaining the Europeanness, the image of the Volvo brand. I think Geely's approach is going to be uh, to allow Volvo to act and, and function as an independent company. The approach or the philosophy is one of standing next to Volvo and learning from them, not uh, intending to take over and run the day-to-day -day operation. Uh, I think Vol Geely stands to benefit from having the affiliation as well as uh, the accelerated learning that goes along with uh, a technology partnership. Yeah, let's talk about that technology partnership. I mean, I mean, how in the end will Geely benefit from this? Uh, will they be able to use it in other parts of their manufacturing? Well, th that, I think, is why the, the uh, negotiation took as long as it did. Uh, intellectual property is, is, is something that is very tricky to negotiate. Um, I think in this particular case, uh, Volvo stands to uh, uh, benefit also from the ability for Geely to help lower its cost structure. But the technology benefit, the brand affiliation that Geely uh, gains from this partnership is what really is the attraction that causes them to want to pay the price that they have uh, to, to bring this partner on. Uh, the big challenge is going to be whether or not they can extract the benefits, both in terms of the technology partnership as well as the ability to uh, grow the brand uh, in terms of its volume in order to justify the price that they paid. Uh, that's going to be a real challenge. Uh, they, they've stated ambitious targets of growing Volvo to about a 300,000 unit company. Uh, mm -hmm. The most successful luxury brand in China today is Audi, and Audi has about 130,000 units of volume in China. So it's going to be very challenging for Volvo uh, to uh, generate the kind of business that Geely has written down in order to justify this plan. Yeah, very ambitious uh, indeed, Bill. So let's talk about Geely's strategy. I mean, obviously, they're picking up this Volvo brand to try to get more international, uh, I guess, more of an international reputation. But what should be Geely's strategy right now, considering you're seeing China's uh, car sales up 80 percent, 70 percent, in fact, overtaking the U.S. as the world's biggest car market? Shouldn't the focus be more domestic rather than international? Well, I think that that's an, I, exactly what they hope to do here. Uh, Volvo has a lot of untapped potential in the China auto market. Uh, it also helps raise Geely's profile as a owner of the Volvo brand. Uh, so I think the, uh, the, the benefits to Geely are probably even greater uh, in the China market than in uh, establishing Geely as an international brand. I think the first priority is going to be uh, to get the cost structure of Volvo to be competitive. Uh, so that they can address the Chinese market with a more attractive value proposition with the Volvo brand. 
uh, also some of the technology affiliation uh, can help uh, Volvo, or excuse me, Geely, uh, improve its uh, product portfolio and help to address a larger volume of uh, Geely branded cars into this market. So I think the first priority is getting the uh, growth and participating as much as possible in the China auto space. Uh, but then obviously Volvo's international presence helps accelerate Geely's emergence as a global automotive player. Mm -hmm. All right. Bill, thank you so much for your time on this Monday. Nice talking to you. Bill Russo, president of uh, Auto Consultancy Synergistics, joining us there from Beijing.